Hi guys. So I wanted to tell you a little story about, um, about a friend of mine who was in the hospital. I go to the hospital, um, like once a week to pray with the patients, you know, and kind of help people see God, um, give them hope. You know, that's the plan, right? Help them to trust and got a little bit more in their valleys. Um, that, that's my job, <laughs> right? So I'm on my way to my last patient's room that was on my list, um, and I and I got a message, and it was a friend of a friend, and he said, you know, my girlfriend is 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 in the hospital and asking for prayer, and I said, well, I'm at the hospital now, like wonder if it's this hospital. And so I go to the nurse's station and of course her name pops up. So I go down to the ER, which I don't do very often because usually they're busy down there and you know, they have bigger fish to fry than having the prayer girl come in. So if I know someone personally, I'll go down there, or if they're if I'm called down, I'll I'll go down. But generally, I don't go into the ER. Um, so I hear her as I go, I go down, and and I hear her before I see her, and I kind of just peek my head in because I don't want to be a distraction and I don't want to be interrupting anything um, that needs to be happening at that point in time. So apparently, she had just gotten there, and. Um, so I peek my head in and immediately she she just reaches out for me. So I go in and and I hug her and and we cry together. And um it's like time stops, you know, for a minute in those kind of moments and I feel it, like I, I feel her pain and I I don't know all of it, but but I know enough to feel it, you know. And so, you know, the intake nurses wait, social workers wait, everyone waits for a minute, a um, couple minutes actually. And um, you know, she just she just cries and. <laughs> At that moment, I'm sure that this is why I exist. Like, this is why I'm here. Um, my presence there matters. Matters a lot. And so, of course, I know that it was God that set this whole thing up, right? Because it's just too crazy for me to be there right at that time. But... And then for him to tell me right at that time before I left. So, you know, confusion sets in at that point with her. And she's like, well, how, how are you here? And, and how did you know? And she doesn't know that I, that I go into the hospital. I don't think it's anything I've ever really mentioned to her. Um, but if I did, I don't think she really remembered or whatever. And so she reads my badge at this point and, um, and she says, pastoral care. And she's like, oh, well, that makes sense, right? Because she knows me and she's been to the hospital. I'm sorry, she's been to, to church with me a couple times. So she knows, you know, she knows about it. So, um, so I just say, well, God knew. <laughs> God sees you and, and God sent me here. And that's exactly the truth. Um, that's the only way I would even be able to explain my presence there at that moment so so then it's my turn to wait and I wait for intakes you know I wait while she tells her whole story and I already know it but the audible retelling of it just it's more than any person should have to bear I mean even hearing it out loud uh, let alone living through it um, without breaking down is just very difficult. So finally, all that's over and we we pray <clears throat> and I hold her and I remind her who she is and remind her who she is in Christ, remind her that she's not alone and, you know, 
make sure she knows I'm here, you know, I'm here for a reason and God sent me and I'm always here and he loves you. And I repeat it, you know, I try to help her see that, you know, get it, remember it. And then we, you know, we cry some more and she, she collects herself and she, um, she, she excuses herself for a second. She says, I, I just need to call my friend really fast, let him know that, you know, I'm here and I'm okay and whatever. And so she calls her friend and, and she says, guess who showed up? And of course she says my name. And then she says, she's such a fucking blessing. And then she apologizes for, you know, the cuss word. And all I can think and you know, just through, through my own tears, I just, I just assure her that those were the very best words that I had heard all week. And, and that's the truth. And that's the truth. And I assure her of my love and of God's love. And, and as I leave, I'm still praying and grieving and grieving for her, but, you know, grieving for, you know, the disgust that I know that I'll face, um, probably behind my back, maybe I won't face it, but it'll be there uh, when I put her precious words in print because they are precious to me, <laughs> cuss word or not, because they're genuine and they matter. And, um, and I just grieve for her and I grieve for all of those who would, who would be disgusted at her words or her word choice while they fail to see a person who, a whole person who's, who's dying in her own pain. And it just grieves me that that, that, that is reality. Um, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be. Because all I can see as I'm praying, as I'm leaving is my own daughter's faces. All I can see is a day that I'm praying that I never have to face, that she is facing. And all I can see is a little girl who started life with far, far, far too much pain. And all I can see is a little girl who's living through far too much pain, day to day, moment to moment. And all I can see is a little girl who needs a new life, a new life to take away that pain. And God gave me that new life. And I just beg him. And, and implore him that he would give grace and you know and change like just ask him to come down like you know you heal the sick and you you raise the lame surely surely you can give grace and, and change to this girl and her life that she needs and um so I just you know, I wanted to see if y'all would pray for that and pray for her if you think of it today um, or in the coming days because her life matters and there are so many like her in our world and we have to care. We have to care. We have to see past uh, all that's wrong and all the wrong choices and we have to see the whole person. And when you really listen to someone and you really hear what they've had to face in their life from, from being a little, little child, then you start to understand a little bit better why people turn to things like drugs and alcohol and can't seem to overcome them. Because no matter how hard they try, those circumstances don't go away. They just escalate and they compound and trauma compounds. And we have to care. We have to show them that there is a different life, a new life, and that Christ can take that pain and he can heal that pain. We can't avoid them and exclude them on the basis of their wrong choices. It's just, that's not grace and that's not what God does. So 
yeah, pray for her if you would. And um, thank you. Thanks for listening.